For our daily cancellation today, we must cancel a woman named Kelsey Ballerini, who I'm told is a country star. I know nothing about her music, but I do know everything I need to know about her personally based on a conversation she recently had during an episode of a podcast called Tell Me About It with Jade Iovine. Now, as reported by The Daily Wire, Ballerina spent, uh, Ballerini rather, spent some time during the interview explaining her reasons for uh, divorcing her husband, singer Morgan Evans. And uh, they just got divorced after five years of marriage. Now, the brief clip of this exchange, which we will play for you now, could be an extremely valuable tool, especially for young couples, okay? In fact, young people in dating relationships, they, they ask me all the time how they can know if they've selected the right partner for marriage, right? That's the big question. Well, here's one way. This is a good litmus test. Sit your girlfriend down or your boyfriend down, play the following clip for them, and then ask if they agree with the attitudes and perspectives they hear in it. And if the answer is anything but, oh, hell no, are you kidding me? Run. Don't walk. Run in the other direction and never look back. So with that set up, here it is. Is this person right for me? Like, am I good with this being forever? Is, am I good with n him never doing the dishes ever in my life, you know, for the rest of my life or whatever those stupid things are? How did you know that it wasn't relationship anxiety or negative intrusive voices in your head and that it was actually like your heart speaking? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I'm really like intuitive and in tune with myself and like my gut and my heart. And I think for a while, you're right. It was kind of like, okay, this is just a new phase of a relationship because relationships go through seasons, right? And like, yes. it's not always going to be rainbows and butterflies. Like, that's just not it. And I, and I think for a long time, I, I was like, oh, this is just the, the glitter wears off. That's what happens, you know? And then you just, you get into a phase where you just, you wait for, you wait for it to come back. And then, you know, and then sometimes it doesn't. But at the end of the day, it is such a disservice and a dishonoring of yourself if you know something is not right and you stay. But your life is so loud. You know, you have so much going on all the time. <laughs> I think when people hear about couples counseling, then they hear about a couple getting divorced. They're like, oh, it didn't work. But oftentimes that is actually couples counseling working, you know, mm. but like because it, you realize that like this was this isn't the relationship for both of you. And yeah. I think what's so hard is having to break your own heart and yeah. someone else's in the process mm -hmm. of saving yourself. So hard. Okay. So the glitter wore off after five years, and then uh, Kelsey, patient woman that she is, waited around for a phase to see if the glitter returned, but to her horror, it never did. She must have spent hours, maybe even days, potentially a week, waiting to see if the magical marriage glitter would fall from the sky, but it didn't. And she doesn't want to be in a non-glittery marriage. Who would? Uh, indeed, she says that it would be dishonoring and a disservice to herself if she were to honor her marriage vows and remain loyal to the man that she pledged her undying love and devotion to. But who cares about things like vows and oaths and everything else? I mean, think about the glitter. That's what matters. So she got up and left. Of course, the other uh, woman in the exchange, Jade, fully understands and agrees with this approach to the marriage sacrament. In fact, she adds that um, this is one of the great benefits of marriage counseling, is that so often, as she explains, it can uh, help you to understand that you need to leave your spouse. After all, if you aren't happy, then what else is there to do? You just have to leave. Do one more glitter check before you head out the door. Stop for a moment, look around. Do you see any glitter? No, well then that's it, time to go. Like I said, play that clip for the, pip, the person you're dating. If they roll their eyes and scoff and say something like, who are these dumb bimbos? You know you found yourself a keeper. But if they listen intently and nod their heads and say, wow, yeah, glitter in the marriage, they make some good points. Promptly get up, Inform the person the relationship is over and just leave. No need for a long emotional conversation. Simply end it now before this person ruins your life because they will. Now, here's the issue with um, the marital insights offered by Kelsey and Jade. Well, there are many issues, but it's a Friday. I don't want to be here all day. So let's uh, we'll boil it down to just a few. What we heard in that clip is the, is the very common and very wrong uh, passive view of marriage and romance. It's the idea that your relationship with your spouse is fueled by some sort of mysterious emotional force, which is often incorrectly called love, and that as soon as your marriage runs out of this mystical fuel, 
All you can do is abandon it on the side of the road and hitch a ride with the next car that happens to drive by. Um, this view is popular in our society because it removes all responsibility and all blame from the individual. Marriage is presented as a passive endeavor. It's something that's established, something that's uh, and then destroyed by forces outside of our control. Love is something that you fall into, right? Like a puddle and then out of. And there's not much you can really do to cause, to cause the one or prevent the other. We chalk it up to irreconcilable differences. It's all just stuff that happens. Oops, I'm married. Oops, I'm having an affair. Oops, I'm divorced. Oops, I'm married again. Oops, I'm divorced again. Oops, I'm lonely and isolated and everyone I've ever known resents me. Oops, silly me. I'm so clumsy. But here's the reality. These were choices every step of the way. And the state which you find yourself in, falling in and out of, this is not love. Because real love is an act of will. It's a decision. It's a conscious activity. It's something that you do. It's something that you live. Okay, love is chosen. And if it's protected and nurtured, it grows. Love is sacrifice. Love is effort. Love is everything St. Paul describes in 1 Corinthians. Love is dying to yourself. Love is, is, is many things, and none of them happen by accident. But most of all, it's a thing you do. It is an activity. So if you stop loving your spouse after five years, it's because you chose to stop, and most likely, you never started. The fundamental confusion is that people think that emotional infatuation that they feel for someone that they first met is love. You know, that's what they think. They might even describe this as falling in love or love at first sight. But infatuation is not love. Infatuation actually has almost nothing to do with love. You can be infatuated with somebody and not love them. Okay, A stalker can be infatuated with somebody and then kill them. Okay. I'm not saying that the infatuation phase is bad. I'm, I'm simply saying that it's a phase. Um, it happens at the very beginning. It's the fuel that's supposed, there's a, there's a reason for it. It has, a, it has a, a function. And the infatuation phase, it's supposed to help launch the rocket and get it off the ground. But it's not going to sustain you for the whole journey or even for any significant part of it. Because infatuation has to give way to love, which isn't to say that love is less exciting or less intense or less thrilling. Quite the opposite, in fact. Infatuation is fleeting. It's thin. It's hormonal. Uh, love is much realer. It's much deeper. It's much more meaningful. I love my wife today, in spite of the Elvis incident, after 11 years of marriage, in a way that I could never have loved her when I first met her. I didn't know her when we first met. The only thing I knew when we first met is that she's hot and she has a fun personality, which was more than enough to be infatuated with, Okay, it doesn't take much to be infatuated. That's, and that's really, especially if you're a guy, that's like all it takes. You don't even need the personality part. It's just, just the first part is really all you need. But that's not love. Um, so Kelsey, when she talks about the glitter, what she's really describing is the infatuation phase. But it's all she ever had with her husband. And once it died, rather than work towards a truly loving and self-sacrificial marriage, she just bailed. Many such cases. Of course, the other problem with this approach, aside from the fundamental misunderstanding about the nature and meaning of love, is that it's entirely self-centered. If, you, you know, if your own immediate and uninterrupted happiness is the focal point of your marriage, it will fail. And there's nothing unique about that. Literally any endeavor will fail if your immediate and uninterrupted happiness is the focal point. You will never be able to do anything worthwhile in life or achieve anything of note ever if you insist that the whole point of the enterprise is for you to simply be happy, okay? If the only thing you care about is your own happiness, you will never do anything worthwhile in your life. You, you will be a failure. You'll be a miserable failure for your entire life. You will live a pathetic, meaningless life, and you will die, and nobody will, will even remember that you existed if you live entirely pursuing your own happiness and nothing else. Now, the irony is that Kelsey is, is apparently a successful musician, which means that she understands this point. She has certainly had to wade through many unhappy moments in order to have a success in her music career. Nobody can achieve anything notable in any career if their own happiness is their sole motivation and goal. I don't know anything about her music. I don't know if it's any good or not, but I mean, I, I suspect it's probably not. But, but, uh, but either way, you, just, it's, you can't become a very successful musician uh, without working really hard. It's just impossible. So if, if, if we can see why that would be the case in a career, why is it so difficult to see how it would apply to other areas of your life? That, that's not to say that happiness is irrelevant or unimportant in a marriage. 
It's just to say that marriage doesn't exist simply to make you happy. That's not the primary function of a marriage. It's not the primary function of your spouse. Okay, it's not your spouse's job to make you happy every second of the day. It's not anyone's job to do that. There is no one on this earth who exists. Scratch that. There is no one who, who, who exists in the entire universe and whose only job is to make you happy. That doesn't, that's, that doesn't exist anywhere. It's not anyone's job to do that. And so it's not fair to put that burden on your spouse, especially since the sort of people who expect others to make them happy all the time are also the sorts of people who are never happy. Which means that you have given your spouse a literally impossible job that you will then blame them for failing to accomplish. All of that is wrong. And if it was just Kelsey Ballerini who had these uh, misconceptions about marriage, it wouldn't even be worth addressing. But tragically, these misconceptions are shared by many in our culture, and it's why so many marriages fail, and, uh, and so many others never even begin. And that's why it's still worth saying today, but unfortunately, Kelsey Ballerini is canceled. And that'll do it for this portion of the show. Let's move over to the members' block. Hope to see you there. If not, talk to you on Monday. Godspeed.